pandemic. Our speaker is an assistant professor in community medicine at the Department of Family and Community Medicine of the UP College of Medicine. He has consistently been awarded as outstanding teacher in clinical clerkship for the past five years. No? He's a founding member and member of the board of the Philippine Society of Public Health Physicians and also of the Alliance for Improving Health Outcomes. He's currently the PRO of PASCOM. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Paolo Victor Medina. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Ma'am Lynn, magko-confirm lang ako. Ako rin kasi yung host, so medyo sana hindi naghihingalo yung... Okay po ba yung sound? Yes, okay po. Okay na, na okay. Kinakabahan na ako baka mag-ano, no? But anyway, sige po. So let me share my slides. And read lang po ah. Just fixing my ano, ano. Oh no, nagsabi na. Sabi na ito na. <laughs> Dahil lang po ah. Narinig pa po ba ako? Ayan. Yes, yes, Lopao. Alright. Uh, nakikita naman po ay slides ko, no? <clears throat> Alright, sige po. Yes. So, good morning. Um, I was tasked to uh, give the record. Thank you the recommendations for academic community medicine in the setting of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, essentially, this is based, it's actually the limited face-to-face -face community medicine proposal by the PASCOM. And um, just to acknowledge po yung work na nagawa, no? Um, of course, this, is, this has been something that uh, the whole executive officers of PASCOM have been refining through several meetings, but just like to commend and acknowledge, of course, the powerful women who uh, um, I owe this presentation to, a lot of the presentation to, so si Cherry po at si Richa. Um, ang bosses din po nila ay nandito, no? Uh, sa likod po sana ng mga rekomendasyon ay ang bosses ng organisasyon. At ang layunin po talaga nito is uh, we really want uh, the schools and institutions um, offering Doctor of Medicine program, uh, including for clinical clerkship and internship rotation. So kasama din po dito yung mga accredited hospitals for postgraduate internship. As the intended users, pinauulan po ng atin pong um, recommendations. Pero sana may mapulot din po kayo kasi hindi lang naman clerkship or internship. no But I think uh, we operate in principle. And maganda na nauna si Doc Andy at si Doc Richa because definitely what they shared forms the backbone of this particular uh, of these recommendations. So this will be the outline of the presentation for today. Um, magkonti lang po na introduction. And then the recommendation begins with demonstrating a model for an instructional design for the limited face-to-face -face community medicine program, including the guiding principles and proposed details of such implementation. And then hopefully we'll be, I'll be able to present practices in terms of how these teaching learning activities have been employed during the pandemic so that the proposed learning outcomes have, are achieved. No? And finally, ang recommendation talaga po is we will be proposing minimum health standards for limited face-to-face -face in community-based activities in consideration of the risk classification of activities in the community. This is very important kasi ang recommendation talaga is while we know that we are in a pandemic with all of its limitations, this is a response to Dean Leirit's emphatic uh, call to us. No? We are supposed to be in the community with our students in this great time. So why are we not there? So parang yan din po siguro yung how do we enable ourselves to do that safely? And um, just to briefly recall, we were uh, at the APMC Board of Trustees meeting last January. This was attended by Cherry, our president, and APMC student network representatives. PASCOM was tasked to come up with this proposal. And um, as the guidelines then only allowed for face-to-face -face in the clinics, no? hospital-based rotations, um, before they were suspended, ito yung konteksto ng umpisa ng proposal. And the proposal has undergone the following steps in its development. Um, and a very critical step was a consultation meeting that we were privileged enough to have attended last March 9, where 153 participants consisting of deans and faculty of medical schools, directors and heads of APMC internship hospitals, 
as well as representatives from the APMC Student Network were present. And their questions, comments, suggestions, and feedback from that consultation meeting have already been included in recommendations. So, and last March 16, 2021, Drs. Bernardo Lazaro, Dr. Opina Tan, and myself, we presented the updated version of the proposal to the APMC Board of Trustees. The intention back then was to really obtain their endorsement and approval in order to pitch to the IATF and CHED regarding the approval of limited face-to-face -face community medicine classes. Uh, however, um, of course, we all know about the circumstances and at best we can only speculate on, on these processes no, and developments. Perhaps the recent surge also played a very big part in this decision making. Um, the proposal remains to be a proposal at this time, but we firmly believe as an organization that its recommendations may prove to be very helpful to you and your institutions as you nuance your academic community medicine activities in your respective contexts during this pandemic. And um, so somehow very practical din po tayo. Note that the proposal in its details are aligned with the existing guidelines, such as the CHED DOH Joint Memorandum Circular number 2021-001 and the Supplemental APMC Guidelines dated January 25, 2021. And the implementation of this community medicine program that's limited face-to-face, -face, we will be proposing this not to circumvent or, or to go against uh, um, existing guidelines. And it's not something that we will be imposing on higher education institutions within the recommendations. Kasi yung recommendation naman po, if babasahin natin sila, they're supposed to be empowering. No? So they recognize the ability and capacity of these HDIs to do this. No? But these are recommendations that we strongly need. No? And I, I guess in this organization, we are really the advocates of, of what Dean Dairet was saying. We have to be there. And somehow, if it needs, if, if we need to convince people how this is to be done safely, then, sabi nga ni Anli kanina, no? Uh, ano ba yung parang mandate natin? Ano yung effort natin para sama-sama natin itong magawa? And the guidelines and the recommendations will also be aligned to the DOH minimum health standards. Hindi natin pwedeng ano yun, babuhin yun. Kasi naniniwala naman tayo na ang batayan nun ay siyensya, ay pinag-usapan. Pero yun din, eh, di ba? Sabi nga kanina, we should be at the forefront of fighting the pandemic. So fighting the pandemic means alignment to the minimum health standards. But I think what's missing, and I, this is my personal opinion, is that the communication to the community, you know, parang it's always one-sided. So yung sinabi nga po ni Rich kanina, the community engagement within, the, uh, within which these minimum health standards are supposedly being implemented, that's one critical gap. And I believe that our role as community medicine educators is to not, not fill in that gap per se, but to really um, address uh, the, the disengagement no? uh, that, that is happening presently with our pandemic response. And well, uh, in the context of the most recent issuance of APMC relevant to all of these recommendations, for those institutions where graduation occurs after medical internship, like my institution, the UP College of Medicine, um, we confirmed, no? and this is the LU7 Academic Committee um, decision which they consulted also to the, to the decision makers, we are free to follow our own criteria clarified with APMC. And thus, if interns can be deployed in the community, uh, provided such as part of, the, of their curriculums, uh, curricula and sufficient pandemic precautions have been undertaken that are according to the aforementioned CHED and IATF guidelines, pwede po talagang mag-deploy. So I will share one such experience later in the hopes that Number one, it can serve as some sort of pilot program where these recommendations of ours can be tested and refined. Parang bakuna lang, no? According to real-world experiences. That, that's what's needed now. And to possibly pave the way for the relevant decision-making bodies to recognize not just the essential nature of doing immersive, experiential, and face-to-face -face community medicine work, but its relevance now, no? Especially during this time... And uh, more importantly, I think for everyone, that it can be done safely. So uh, let's start by, with the first recommendation really is we are educators, no? So thank you again to PASCOM for enabling not just uh, 
the discussion of these things passionately, but applying the rigors of able to begin by discussing how do we go about teaching community medicine in a limited face-to-face -face program. Bakit limited face-to-face? -face? Well, kasi nga may limitations po yung pandemya, no? And this overview of our proposed instructional design uh, where the specific learning outcomes were matched with the recommended teaching learning activity and as well as the methods we can all use to evaluate them, I will be discussing these elements in detail in the succeeding slides. But before we go there, let's just be reminded of what Doc Anli, the challenges, no? and then what Doc Richa have already shared. In drafting the instructional design, the following were the principles and considerations that we all look in, in, and considered for it. And hindi ko na po ulitin yung excellent na naipaliwanag na po ng aking mga kasama kanina, no? pero paalala lang natin, na ang, ang definition talaga of community medicine as the discipline uh, concerned with the prevention of disease, the determinants of health, and the natural history of disease in populations, and the influence of the social determinants, really, environment and society on illness and wellness, yan po talaga yung consideration. And that ang samahan natin sa PASCOM, no, yung apat na essential elements of community medicine practice, hindi lang natin to uh, itinuturo kung hindi isina sa praktika. At doon po talaga nag-uugat yung pagtuturo. No? So I, I see in the chat box na may mga tanong din po on um, what can we do to adjust it in terms of the online, uh, the primary means of learning and engagement now. Well, the, the quick answer to that is that can be done, but the challenge now is how do we include all of these essential elements to the practice of community medicine in this time of the pandemic? And the, these recommendations are also an, an attempt to be able to share those things with you. And community development concepts definitely were also considered, including the key concepts of affecting change in our communities. No? And key dito talaga, if you will see, is that we are very mindful of the community engagement principles that uh, Doc Rich uh, excellently um, explained to us. No? And ultimately, ang pinaninindigan talaga is that kung ituturo natin to at gagawa tayo ng paraan ng pagtuturo nito sa panahon ng pandemya, di dapat ang mental model nito ay ang komunidad ay partner. At hindi nga yung mga nabanggit na nga ni Doc Richa kanina. No? So we do not think that the communities are merely classrooms. They are not laboratories for us to experiment on. And they are not charity cases to receive parang care. They, we, the community is really an active partner in their societal social development. And the right to health is very, very important. More so in this time of the pandemic, napakayaman po talaga hindi lang nung maituturo at matututunan, matututuhan ba, sabi nung isang influencer, no, in this time. But really, uh, what does it mean for the practice of community medicine, again, resonating with that challenge that uh, Dean Lairit opened this particular webinar series with. What is our role in controlling the pandemic? And yung paduktong nun, not just controlling the pandemic, but actually controlling the pandemic is all about community societal development. And that fits into who we are as practitioners. No? And well, if you want to be technical about it, finally, we also considered the CHED program outcomes for the medical graduate, where we can all say that each and every program that we offer uh, in medicine would fulfill all of these learning outcomes. But at least five learning outcomes, we believe, no, and we can make a case for the rest. But as a society, we believe that at least five of them, half of them, can be best addressed by the community medicine program. So it behooves us really to come up with these recommendations. And while there are many variations across all medical schools, no, um, one critical template that we can look at is the National Medical Internship Programs mandated by law. And given the pandemic, I think the strong recommendation is aside from being there, syempre hindi naman po kami gung-ho na hindi natin isa sa alang-alang limitasyon no, and considerations, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. But it's really about blended learning 
if you want to be technical about the term, where both on-site limited face-to-face and online teaching learning activities you know, can create this general learning outcome. At the end of this limited face-to-face community medicine program, our learners must be able to apply effective community medicine interventions through critical community engagement. Yung nabanggit na po ni Dr. Richa kanina, no? addressing the challenges that Anneli um, uh, was saying earlier so that we can contribute ultimately to addressing the needs of the community in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. And while the lecture earlier is something that I can only serve to highlight, no? Sinasabi lang din namin that as I go through the instructional design, um, the framework, so parang essentially kung saan ba kami nag-usap, ano yung aming pinanimindigan, no? the framework is really about that achievement of that critical community engagement. And so the mindfulness of where our institutions are, where we are in terms of our collaborative partnerships also feeds into what specific teaching learning activities now can we do? Sabi nga ni Doc Richa, mag-level up naman tayo. Huwag naman tayong puro survey lang. Kasi tama naman yun. Kung ang assessment natin ng critical engagement na natin sa community partners natin ay ganitong level, baka hindi na po dapat survey. No? And as we do our specific learning outcome of assessing the health characteristics and needs of a particular community, we want our learners to know that and we align that with CHED, no? so ganito po yung magiging slides natin moving forward, we want to be able to adjust the teaching learning activities. Pinagtatalunan namin to pag nag-uusap kami no, sa mga meetings kung saan nagawa po itong presentation na ito. But essentially, that community diagnosis and our health needs assessment, that is the what. No? Now, ano yung how? Ano yung nuances niya? And again, we begin with the foundations of our work in community medicine. And when we evaluate also, we call it a situational assessment report. But what does it look like when it's at this level of engagement? So anong sasabi dito? Sana hindi na siya parang basic lang lagi na paulit-ulit natin ginagawa. No? Pero nanunuans din talaga siya uh, in terms of our collaborative partnerships. In terms of the second learning outcome, the access to quality primary care services to people in the community is this through telemeans or is this face-to-face? This is something that the institution has to discuss, again, based on their um, resources. And in terms of evaluation, these, these patient census or case logs of cases seen in the community, the discussions, how do we now um, contextualize again them and nuance them in this pandemic? In terms of the collaboration, we call the teaching learning activities meetings. But what are the meetings for? And so, uh, nauna talaga yung, sina- yung, yung session ni Doc Richa kasi yung meetings na yun, paano yun na ikokontext to? Hindi pwedeng nag-meeting lang tapos sasabihin natin na yun na yun. No? And while we evaluate that basically by documenting that it happened, how are we now challenged to, as so, ulitin ko yun sinabi ni Doc Richa, step up in terms of what we've been doing with our community stakeholders. No? And in terms of that, the learning outcome, the last learning outcome, we want to be able to create or participate meaningfully in activities that have addressed a particular need or health issue in the community. And therefore, that the teaching learning activity for our learners centers around the creation of such activities or the meaningful participation in these partner community activity or activities. No? So again, what, but more importantly, how were these done? And um, the, the, the evaluation, we can do a summative report, we can do documentations of these. No? We can ask them, our learners, to provide reflections, insights, and learnings and activities. So uh, the recommendations are really generic, but what's important is that our mental models, our frameworks, we start thinking of these activities is that they are not just designed by us in consequential and disconnected from each other, but what enables these things to, for activities to be identified, designed and implemented with communities is the quality of our partnerships and engagements. No? And whether the assessment is we haven't really engaged as much given the current stage 
of that partnership, then the teaching learning activities could be um, modified, new ones, so that we can move towards yung sinabi nga po ni Dr. Rachel kanina that the critical, meaningful community engagement. And so, the minimum requirements, ito lang din po yung parang ano natin. Anong itsura niyan, Doc, pag, ano, no, pag praktikalan na? Uh, well, these are minimum requirements for, 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 for the learning outcomes, instructional design. No? And we have argued about this, but I think this is so that we can fit into most of your existing programs, diba? most of our existing programs. But these requirements would essentially be a product of the mindfulness about the interrelationships of all of those teaching learning activities vis-a-vis -vis the learning outcomes that we are um, supposed to be doing. And while we know that um, your, your programs might be more than five days, no, ito rin yung parang napag-usapan namin uh, and what, what we presented. We are not prescribing this as our day one to five. You can design, again, it's a blended learning program or recommendation, again, given the limitations of the pandemic. Limited talagang face-to-face, itanggapin natin yun. Kasi even our um, colleagues in the other clinical disciplines, di ba? sila din ay nasabihan na kailangan i-reduce, again, because of the realities of the pandemic. But when we reduce di ba, our um, community medicine programs, we are saying that the face-to-face -face interactions, no, putting faces, putting names, putting stories, putting contexts to the data information that we are getting through remote means, no, we, we can limit those to five days at the minimum. And again, um, ito ay pinag-uusapan pa. <laughs> diba? Depende talaga yan sa programa ninyo. Pero minimum, kasi kailangan lang din natin na maging objective about it. No? And in terms of duty hours, for example, when you say duty hours, these are the, the times, the, the periods where the community-based activities are done. In terms of uh, recognizing the risks inherent to the pandemic, no? we are saying that we should be doing our activities during daytime or office hours in respect also not just to the logistics of the school, but also the situation of our communities. And after 5 p.m., wala na sa activities, no? no night shift activities for face-to-face, -face. again, safety, security concerns, but also with the mindfulness of the needs and context of our partners, our community partners. And of course, the limited face-to-face -face community based activity shall only be conducted or located in areas with the quarantine status is low risk as determined by the national or local government units. And safety and security protocols are strictly adhered to. And nakalagay po dito na memorandum, memoranda of agreement or understanding uh, has to be in place. And so one of the things that we will be sharing with you in this webinar series is a practical way of doing those things. You know? So again, this also serves as a platform for the future sessions of this particular webinar series. So, share lang din po namin yung what are the present practices that we've collated from our members and uh, uh, our member institutions, no, which are aligned with the essential elements of community medicine practice as well as the proposed learning outcomes. So, best practices so that we can all fulfill um, the need for that. Sometimes kasi it, it, it helps when we see that these things have been successfully done. No? So, uh, a very good example would be this from uh, Dr. Bien Elinilios, uh, our uh, member in PASCOM also, where their communities during the pandemic, they did paper cases and they were assigned with the medical institutions and chosen by the students. And what's important is the school institution facilitated this process and the school was an enabler in terms of the services that the groups were able to coordinate. For... Um, for provision of primary care services during the pandemic, this is something from uh, another PASCO member of ours, an officer, Dr. Mary Mia Clamor of PLM, showing that prevention and health promotion, not just curative activities, can still be done very much. No? And um, the employment of the social media tools that we have uh, in this time. And then this one is telemedicine in the community um, from Dr. Harry Hamoy something that is done in Mendes. Sorry, I think 
the sound is not playing because I failed to um, enable it. But it's basically just a collaborative effort done with the local government facilitated by the interns no? um, using the remote learning tools that are available to them. They were able to coordinate and come up with this, uh, not just the health information and promotion materials for the program, but to actually set it up remotely also. Um, enabled by the Community Health and Development Program of you. For, for another um, thing that is being done now would be the participatory social development, um, which is critical to our practice. So again, when we teach, sabi nga po ni Dr. Richard, di ba, parang kanina, we really have to practice what we are teaching. And again, as a discipline, that's who we are. That's what we are. And in terms of the continued work of ASMPH with their community partners and community members, as well as their sectoral representatives and even CSO NGO reps in the time of the pandemic, this, these are opportunities to show the students, our learners, that the engagement, while limited, diba, we are physically distanced, but we should not be socially distanced. And... Um, well, this one is a very good example also. And uh, ito'y galing kila Doc Lynn at kay Ma'am Jean, no? our moderators for, for, the, for the day. And what they were proposing, which uh, as far as um, my update with them is that this has been approved already, is that the local government is looking at this as an opportunity for them to collaborate. And um, in terms of the, the vaccination programs that are planned and uh, are, are yet to take off. No? Um, ito po ay ginagawa nila at uh, gagawin. Uh, wala pa lang po daw ang bakuna. But it's really about, well, the social accountability of the institution with their community. And when we engage in partnerships, we discover that there are resources that the partners, kaya nga siya partnership, are able to put into the equation and so that we can come up with these collaborative solutions and interventions and activities to address needs of people in the community. And so, ito lang po yung sabi namin, no? in terms of the, well, the four elements, siguro in our assessment, and again, this is a conversation, we can make the case against and for it, but we really think that while we can do the community as a unit of analysis and solution, as well as the provision of accessible and appropriate health services remotely with telemedicine, for example, and through Zoom or Google Meets, no? bagamat challenge din po ang internet connection. The participatory social development and that uh, the working of community-based physicians collaboratively with professionals and paraprofessionals to achieve health development is something that is very, very difficult, if not impossible, to translate online. And so we will argue really that blended talaga po ang solusyon. Limitahan natin, kilalanin natin ang risks natin for the pandemic. No? But those risks, when we recognize them, we're very mindful about them, we can be equipped to mitigate them. It's a very, very similar, if not it's the same actually process, when we say that clinical experience in the hospital is essential. Community experience, not just clinical, but societal, is also essential. And so when that is the mindset, how can we do these things safely, securely in the context of the pandemic? And so um, I share with you our experience in UP, the UPC MPG Community Medicine Internship that is done within the University of the Philippines Community Health and Development Program. We divided as per the general um, directions of the PGH internship, um, our program into two phases with the intention of maximizing the opportunities for face-to-face -face, um, in the second phase. And um, from phase one, which was October 2020 to March 2021, what we did was really purely remote. However, that remote option, we strove and we Strove po ba, tama po ba yun? We tried our best no, to facilitate community engagement despite all of the difficulties. And actually, I, I don't want to be triggered by it, but it, this was very difficult. As the first coordinator, I am grateful also what Dr. Cho was saying. We have a team and 
without the team, we couldn't have done this. And the team essentially was still continuing with its work. No? Kita po dyan na, while we were doing remote uh, learning with our interns, our learners, the team was there because we recognized that the participatory social development activity still had to be done. But now, well, somehow this helps. No? Um, we uh, had to prepare. So phase one was extended. The setup was extended up until April 28. But for April 29, what PGH did in terms of um, offering its learners the opportunity to complete what we call competencies for, um, for their medical training is that they tasked us to come up with options for community medicine and public service work. And while we, our bias really was to um, enable the interns to get to Amiga for our partners so to do community medicine face-to-face, -face, we still gave them options that we tried to vet no, um, according also to the principles mm -hmm. that we showed, that I showed you earlier. So uh, optional po ang pagpunta ng mga interns sa Amiga, pero kung ayaw po nila yun or hindi nila for whatever reason, hindi na po namin there are other options for them. For many, for some of them who are still in their provinces, we uh, have enabled them to volunteer with their local government units for health system volunteer work. Then we've uh, entered into a partnership with the Department of Health through the Health Promotions and Communication Service under Dr. Beverly Ho, so that the interns can choose to do that. And Aside from that, we have other options in, uh, which are also part of our continued work. For our lower years, we have urban community medicine work that they can explore if they are interested also in those things. So I think what was important really was to offer this as something that was enabling rather than just saying that you can't go to the community. And um, as clarified earlier, this is part of our curriculum and Kaya ko rin po siya share is because it enables me now to go get into the towards the last part of the session. How are we taking care of the interns when we will do this limited face-to-face -face or any face-to-face -face for the matter? You know? And so the principles really are founded on the minimum public health standards. We will not go, as our director in the CHDP, uh, Sir Anne Cordero would always say, we will not insist on something that the DOH does not require. Parang, di ba? Parang ang weird naman nun. But we are there to show that these minimum public health standards are important. The role modeling, the engagement no, is important also. And that we will abide by these because these are founded on the science of avoiding um, the virus. And while there are pre-deployment considerations that all programs would have to think of, and again, this is where the self-assessment of the capacity of the institution comes in, well, our medical students have to be protected. And uh, medical insurance at the minimum fail health has to be there for them. And well, this is also a time for us to reflect on, well, pre-pandemic, they were being exposed to clinical scenarios and situations that put them significantly at risk also. So maybe this is high time for us to review these things. No? Of course, the MOA, MOU between the institutions, the partners, and the LGUs have to be also be there. And that MOA MOU will also be qualified and nuanced in terms of, in this particular slide, um, I tried to show you how we were looking at community transmission. And for example, this is the town of Amadeo, my town of assignment. And the, the peak there was a surge last March. And um, siguro ang, ang, ang kailangan lang din pong emphasize yan, Bago po yung surge na yun, ang isa din pong critical na naging decision point na pwede kami magkaroon ng deployment. Not just sa school na side, but the MHO, LGU partners, Amiga partners, no? Is that for the year, more than a year into the pandemic, there were very, very few um, healthcare worker infections of COVID-19 at the community level. Why? Well, because there are also protocols that are being followed at the community level, similar to what we do in the hospital. So itong signed MOA MOUs have to be contextualized uh, in terms of that. No? Then, kailangan ba may negative RT-PCR? Kailangan ba mag 14 day quarantine? These are things that you, we settle, uh, not settling them one-sided, no? but these are things we discuss with our community partners. And as Dean Dairit was saying earlier, or in the chat box, if I, if I remember, then we enroll these, we, these interns, most of them, if not all of them, have actually been 
immunized. And now they are already there in the community. And what's important is this was offered as a, an enabling thing for our community, for our, for our interns. So it's signed voluntary consent uh, for the students. And in drafting the proposed health and safety protocols for, for this limited face-to-face -face commu community medicine program, this was something that we discussed at the level of the UP Community Health and Development Program, particularly the faculty of uh, FCH 260.2. And while we can argue again what are high risk, intermediate risk, low risk, the principles stand. By doing this, by assessing what the interns are supposed to be doing in the community, that mindfulness will help us reduce their risks and do interventions that will be able to um, do the, uh, help them do these things safely. And so what are the protocols, the loose protocols? No? The, the general principles, well, PPE has to be there at all times. Then the invitation to remove their PPEs that we encounter when we do community medicine. These are things that we respectfully decline. And so it entails a lot of uh, preparation with our community partners, a lot of leveling off what are the expectations. And for the most part, our community partners in Amiga have been quite um, agreeable to this. Again, it's really because the nature of the partnership uh, enables these processes, you know, the trust is there. And then for activities, activities and meetings that we all do before the pandemic, they can be nuanced and contextualized into something uh, that is more fit or apt to the pandemic. And um, again, the principle really is to recognize the risk and then mitigate them. And so ventilation, physical distancing, PPE, and then a health declaration form for all participants, not just in terms of um, um, their engagement with patients, but also in terms of the activities that they will be doing is facilitating is facilitative of that risk mitigation um, principle. And so we are also open to, because this is one of the biggest um, expectations of our community partners, the primary care service delivery component. And so patient encounters, we have um, prepared with the community um, COVID-proof barangay health stations or community health clinics. It's not, it hasn't been easy and uh, we are still very much in the birthing pains of it, but the, this is possible. And again, it's possible because our community partners, the healthcare workers who are there in the community have been doing these things also for the more, most of the year that has passed. No? And well, one thing that we had to adjust was while community immersion may be allowed, foster parenting arrangements was something that we don't recommend to again, reduce not just the risks, not of the students really, but the community members. We are cognizant of the fact that we are from an area of high community transmission. And so what we did was to um, have PGH help us and agree that uh, our interns would be undergoing negative uh, RT-PCR tests and negative swab tests are a requirement before they are deployed. And in terms of transportation, they are together, but we don't fill up the van like before. So maximum per van for a 15, 13 seater van is six to eight interns. And because we need to also protect them. Um, and in the community, the supervision um, is there. And it's not, the faculty is not always there. It's, it's quite impossible, but our community partners are there and the nature of the partnership is such that it's enabling of this. So again, if hindi naman kaya, uh, naman namin yun, but the potential for doing something like this, I think is worth showing. No? And daily symptom monitoring shall be done. And what I did, I'm personally just sharing this and sorry, I know I've, I've gone over time now a bit, but um, I'm just showing this that this is Telegram and um, Per group of interns, there's an intern safety officer, I'm the faculty safety officer, and there's active monitoring every single day, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. They have to check in with me. And as such, we are able to also catch any concerns, not just, and when the interns are very mindful also of their own situation and they trust the, the faculty, they are very free with uh, their, their feedback also and the situation. And, we are able now to address their concerns almost real time, or if not real time basis. 
And then siguro ang i-highlight lang din po, kasama din po kasi sa safety considerations namin, ang proximity to the Taal Volcano. And so kasama po siya yung mga daily na binibigay na, uh, ano lang, FIVOX. No? And uh, this one is, uh, in terms of the protocols to manage exposed cases, the PGH has its own in terms of the reopening guidelines for interns. And so we built on that, but we had our own also document for community medicine face-to-face -face volunteer immersion in the community. And number 10, the recommendation, really a very, very strong recommendation is that memorandum of agreement or understanding is present between the institution and the community partners. And uh, ours is the UPCHDP, um, um, MOU, uh, MOA, but uh, it has been updated so that uh, the, the provisions uh, considering the pandemic have been taken into account. No? And so I, I think uh, Dr. Cherry will be able, we will be able to share with you the document if you are interested. Again, we operate in principle, this is non-prescriptive, but if this can help you tailor fit your programs no, or to help you even advocate to your institutions that let's bring our students to the community. Maybe we can do this. Um, this might help uh, if, if you will uh, consider the document. No? And so I'm ending with this. No? Parang this future that uh, Willoughby Latham was talking about in 1978, which is also incidentally the declaration of Alma Ata, diba? the future is now, actually the future <laughs> supposed to have been a long time ago, diba? but the future, I guess, with the pandemic is now. And so these things have to be shown, not just shown, but actually experienced by our learners if we are to change this health system of ours. No? And again, just to highlight, the activities, ang kailangan lang talaga natin is these activities are uh, well thought of. They're not inconsequential and not disconnected from each other within the framework of that critical community engagement that Dr. Richa was mentioning earlier. And in summary, what we are working towards is community development. And these values, we have to be able to role model them and actually operationalize them at the community level with our students. You know? And the, the engagement continuum, the participation um, ladders, for example, that we are all, um, we all learned about or were reminded about earlier, these are things that are important, very, very important, not just now, but they've always been important. But maybe this is now our opportunity to really speak truth to power you know, and show, sabi nga yung direct kanina, we are the fifth discipline. Sorry, sir, I've always thought of myself as a major rotation. <laughs> Never thought of myself as outside of the big four uh, as a practitioner. And so... Siguro kung practical na lang din na technical, we are just complying to the UHC law in terms of its IRR of reorienting medical curricula towards primary health care. We want to achieve all of those CHED program outcomes. And the community is a teaching learning environment that's very rich in enabling our learners to fulfill these program outcomes. No? The essential elements of community medicine practice are there. This is our discipline. And the essential elements feed into that narrative. We are supposed to be a critical discipline to fight this pandemic. Why are we not there? And ultimately, what we are giving is a choice and opportunities for, let me just reiterate that, our adult medical school learners to maximize learning and provide service. Of course, we will not throw them under the bus. We are educators, we are workers towards the future of this health system of ours. So how do we enable them to do community medicine safely in this time of the pandemic? And well, sabi nga naman, kaya naman tong gawin, no? maybe done with limited face-to-face -face activities and strategies, but it also takes a recognition of who we are and our institutions no? and our partnerships. So do we have the capacity and resources? If not, then let's scale down a bit. But what are we working towards? What's our vision, diba? The willingness of students and faculty to do this? Sure, it, we want to have volunteers go ahead, but I think the faculty, you are here attending this webinar because you are, you are part now of that movement, no? believing that we have social accountability. And number three, the commitment of our community partners, 
the community partnership that's also very very important hindi naman pwedeng and again we have to be recog- uh, cognizant of that there are asymmetric power dynamics in this relationship so again tayo po na members ng PASCOM tayo pong natutulong ng community medicine paano po natin na i-advocate ang mga bagay na ito sa atin po not just the learners no, but our community partners and our institutions medyo sabi nga unenviable yung task natin pero love ko yung keynote ni and Lizzie GK Chesterton eh. di ba na parang para hanggang saan po natin uh, willing na gawin ito no o panindigan ng pagiging community medicine practitioners and teachers natin so maraming salamat po at pasensya na po na medyo nag-extend ng konti thank you Okay, thank you very much.